How are you guys doing? Yay, good to see you. It's good to be on the coast, because I live in Pasadena, so it's beautiful out here. So, um, so we have newcomers. So like Susan said, we're going to do uh, all plant-based, so no animal products at all. And then we're also going to do, um, I'm talking quiet, because this is really loud. Put it out, OK. <laughs> I'm like, wow. OK, great. All right. And then I'm also going to do um, low fat. So when I'm cooking in my saute pan, I'm not going to use oil. I'm going to use water instead. Um, you can also use uh, vegetable broth or stock as well. Um, and then it's going to be low sugar, too. So I'm going to be using for my dessert uh, dried fruit like dates instead of um, refined sugars, brown sugar, white sugar, all that. Yeah, so those are the main concepts. So we're going to get started. Does everybody have their recipe sheet? So you can follow along. <clears throat> so I'm going to do lentil tacos first. And I basically got this recipe from the Trader Joe's seasoning mix, the taco seasoning mix. On the back of it, it has um, half of the pack of seasoning mix, a pound of ground beef, which I'm substituting with um, lentils instead. So I got these lentils at Trader Joe's in the, in the produce section. They're in the refrigerator. Um, and they're in like a little plastic sealed thing. So it's really easy to use. Just open it up and they're already pre-cooked and you just warm them up or put them in your dish and make what you're making, right? Um, then we're going to use uh, tomatoes, either a tomato sauce or tomatoes like um, diced tomatoes. And I'm choosing to use diced. Uh, it makes it like a little bit more chunky. Um, you can also use a sauce. I think the sample that we're doing later on that you guys are going to try has just the tomato sauce instead. So it's going to be a little bit thinner. And then onion. And you can use any onion you want. I'm using uh, sweet onion. Um, and then in the recipe, it says canola oil, tablespoon, but I'm going to use a tablespoon of water or a little bit more. Uh, yeah, cool. So let's get started. So first thing, turning on your oven, portables. Has anybody uh, done water saute or sauteing with vegetable broth instead of oil? Nice. Good. Uh, so usually I get it pretty hot, my pan. And always starting out with onion helps because the onion releases water into the pan and helps everything not stick. So I'm just going to do a basic um, dice. So it says diced, it says chopped. It says chopped in the recipe. It says one medium onion. I'm just going to do, it's basically half an onion. And I'm going to put it in just straight in. So you want to get your pan really hot first. And I'm going to like cheat some stuff today because I'm just doing a demo for you guys, right? So it's not super, super hot yet, but am I in the sweet spot? Wow. OK. And then I have water. I always have like a little jar of water that I have when I'm cooking. Um, so I'm just going to put like a tablespoon in. So you're basically substituting just water or vegetable broth or stock for oil, right? So these just cook and cook and cook a little bit until they're a little bit brown. And you keep adding a little bit of water 
when the water evaporates and the onions start sticking. I'm sorry? Is it bothering you? Okay, we can turn the music off. Can we turn the music off in the background? <laughs> I guess it's a little bit not working at the moment. Thanks. Better? Okay, yeah, you're welcome. I just like music and kind of like shaking and rolling and rocking, so <laughs> I thought it would work, but it's okay. Okay. So those are going to cook in the recipe. It says saute for two minutes, and um, you're just going to brown them up a little bit. Um, and then next, we're just going to put our lentils in. So they come like this. It's like a vacuum-sealed plastic bag. Um, you could also do, sometimes they have like canned lentils or packaged lentils. Sometimes lentils come in like a package like this. It's called like a Tetra Pak on the shelf. Um, or you can make your own lentils. Lentils are uh, pretty easy to make in general. Um, quicker than a bean, like black beans or pinto beans. But this is really, really easy, right? Just open the package and there it is. So these are already cooked, so I'm just basically warming them and incorporating them with the onions. Mixing it all together. Yeah, if you have any questions as I'm going, you can just like yell out, maybe. Yes. So the higher plant-based uh, foods would be lentils, beans, soy products like tofu, tempeh. So yeah, that would be a substitution for the animal-based meats like chicken or pork or beef or seafood. OK, so those are all like together. And then you're going to add the taco seasoning. And the recipe calls for half of the package, but this is really up to you how spicy you want it, because this does have um, cayenne pepper in it and chili pepper. So it is a little bit hot. So I think the recipe that we did for today for you guys to sample, we did a third of the seasoning instead of a half. So it's really up to you how spicy you want it. Um, and then you could use your own spices if you wanted to, too. You could just add traditional Latin spices like cumin and maybe a tiny bit of chili powder, some garlic powder, maybe onion powder, something like that. So we're just using a little bit of that. Incorporating it all together. And then we're going to add the tomatoes. So I've got the Trader Joe's diced tomatoes. And these ones don't have uh, added salt, which is good if we're thinking about our sodium content and if we have any blood pressure issues that we're trying to keep in control. Yay, pretty tomatoes. It's kind of like a sloppy joe kind of a style we got going here, right? Yeah. yeah. So you could do this on a taco, inside of a burrito, maybe even on a sandwich, like a sloppy joe, possibly, you know? So you could just get creative with it, whatever you want to do. You could just put it over some vegetables, sauteed vegetables or steamed vegetables. Yeah. So 
that's basically it. Do you write? Yeah. So the consistency right now is a little bit, a little bit juicy. So that uh, cooks down for a little bit and says simmer until thickened. Sure. And that's basically it. So you kind of get get the consistency and the texture that you want. I would I would probably cook it down just a little bit more than this and then serve it. So. But I'm going to show you how I serve it uh, just in a little bit. So I'm going to turn this off. And then we're going to go to the sour cream, tofu sour cream. And that's the next recipe down. So let's see. Where's my sweet spot? Do I have to move everything? Let's see. Let's see, this, thank you. A round of applause for the lovely Susan. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna move everything like right here. Yeah, okay. All right, so then the tofu um, sour cream is also very, very easy. Um, so I'm going to use this red wine vinegar, uh, lemon, which looks like this, if you guys don't know what a lemon looks like. <laughs> and then I have a silken tofu that I use. Um, and this is, can you see that? Um, this is not in the refrigerator section like you would normally get tofu it's in the on the shelf in usually like the asian or ethnic section so they have um different cons consistencies so this is extra firm they have firm and soft and different styles so this is the one i use for the tofu sour cream and i actually need this back i forgot So I'm gonna put my wet ingredients in. So I'm using a, this is a Vitamix, but you can use whatever very high powered um, blender that you have. So this is just a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. And then a tablespoon of lemon. Do you guys know this technique? You kind of like, can you see me? I'm just like rolling it so the the lemon, I'm like squeezing some of the juice out of the, uh, out of the lemon. And before I cut it, let's see. Which one? This one? This is 12.3 ounces. Yeah. And then what do I have? I have this little strainer from the lemon. Let's see. That works. So, it's about a tablespoon of lemon juice. Right. And then we're just going to open up the tofu. So it's just in like this little package. I'm just going to cut it at the top. On the recipe, it actually says, I probably should have taken it off, but um, it says to drain the tofu, but I never do that. <laughs> so um, it's not that much liquid in it. That's it. So now we're just going to blend it. And start out kind of slow. I'm going to 
it all mixed up really quick. The um, probably about five days, maybe a week, but yeah, should probably use it before then. And when you do, you have it in your fridge, it kind of separates just a little bit, but I just, each time I use it, mix it together again before I use it on whatever I'm doing. So the consistency is kind of like a sour cream. Can you see that? Am I... Do, do, do. Yeah. So, um, so I'm gonna plate the taco now. So I'm on the recipe. It says to. Um, it suggests the Ezekiel tortillas, food for life, uh, corn tortillas or whole wheat tortillas. But you can use whatever tortilla you like. Um, just make sure that it doesn't have oil added to it, so you keep it low fat and uh, no extracted oils. If you're keeping in line with the low fat theme. So, let's see. So I just grab a little bit of my lentil taco filling. Yeah, usually. Yeah, just for today, but yeah, today I won't, just for a time, but um, yeah, you could heat them um, in another skillet or just on the open flame, <laughs> dangerous style, you know? Okay, so just put the that down and then let's see what else do I have. Ba -da -da, this is my dancing, okay, here. Um, so I have a salsa authentica from Trader Joe's, but you can use whatever salsa you want. Um, I'm not gonna use that. I'm just gonna put it down. Um, actually, and then I also am gonna put, um, in the recipe it calls for shredded lettuce, romaine, mixed greens, or your choice. So I have some like mixed greens, so I'm gonna put that down first, actually. Lovely like. And then a little bit of salsa. Doo, doo, doo. I always have to get my, my food photography ready. I'm always taking pictures of my food. And then a little bit of sour cream. Ding. Voila! Yay! <laughs> Um, so this is just how I'm preparing it, but you guys can make it however you'd like. Yes. Tempeh is, uh, it's kind of, <clears throat> it's a fermented soy and rice product, and it comes in usually like a rectangular shape, like a patty, it's compressed together, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to Oh, um he asked what tempeh is. Mhm. Mm okay. So So we're going to move on to dessert. Who's ready for dessert? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. So I'm going to use a food processor for this one. What's that? What's down in the corner? Hello. Okay, thank you. Okay. So these are my ingredients over here. I have uh, rolled oats. And I have 
walnut. Um, I've got cacao powder. So that's just chocolate powder without any added sugar or any added anything. It's just cocoa beans ground into a powder. Um, and also have cinnamon and salt if you want to add salt it's optional though and then cayenne so it's a mexican hot chocolate bite so traditionally a mexican hot chocolate has some spice to it right so if you don't like spice just leave that out and it's still super yummy or put less of it in just depending on how you like it yeah so let's start so it's a cup of rolled oats with a half a cup of walnuts. And these are toasted rolled oats from Trader Joe's. I'm sorry? Yeah, oven toasted old fashioned organic oats. So one cup of that. And then half a cup of walnuts. <clears throat> um, no, they're not raw. Um, they're halves and pieces organic from Whole Foods 365. You can use any. Yeah, just make sure that they don't have added salt and you're fine. Okay, so we're gonna mix those two things together with the top. Let's see. And you kind of have to decide what consistency you want your little bites. Um, I like them not too chunky, so you're just gonna blend it more. So you blend those two together first, and then you're going to add the dates and combine all three of those together. So I have these dates from Trader Joe's. Um, it's 12 dates, and let's see. I'm going to pit them because the the dates that I got have um, you know the seeds in them still, so. Um, and I also, I put them in water. So you want to get some warm water and soak your dates before, especially if they're really hard. I guess it depends on the dates that you get, how hard they are. But I always soak my dates so it's easy to, easier to combine them all together with the other ingredients. So I'm just going to take the seeds out and then there's like this little top stem part of the date sometimes i like to take off um so you just put take all 12 and do that so you're using warm water here um anybody have any questions while i do this these have been soaking just for the past like 30 minutes maybe 45 minutes and they're, they've, um, they've soaked up a, a good amount of water, so they're definitely a lot more soft. So you don't need too long of a time. So pr probably at least like 15, 20 minutes would be good. Yeah, anybody else have more questions? Are you excited to try the food? Yeah. Yay! Are you guys hungry? Okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, after, so after the dates are soaking, do you use the water? That's your question? Um, you could, yeah. You could put it in a smoothie or, mm, 
just drink it. <laughs> um, yeah, I usually just throw it away, but there is, you could use it, definitely. Do you have any ideas how you would use it? Oatmeal? Use it in your, like to cook your oats in? Yeah, that's a good idea, nice. Okay, so that's ready. So we're just gonna combine those together. So it's already getting pretty well combined. This is at the point where it starts getting like, like a huge ball inside of there. So these are actually pretty chunky because I didn't uh, come, I didn't blend the other ingredients, the walnuts and the oats, too much. So they're a little bit chunky, but yeah, it just depends on what you want. And then as you're going, if it doesn't look like it's going to be able to form into a ball too well, which these. These are looking pretty good. We haven't put the spices in yet, but that looks like it's going to form a ball well. You could add a little bit of some kind of plant milk, like soy or almond or whatever you'd like, just so there's a little bit more a wetness so that they, they come together. But that's just um, up to you. So we're going to add the, um, the spices now. So I have cayenne, cacao, and cinnamon. So there's see, three tablespoons of cacao powder. And this is, what's that? It's chocolate. Yeah, it's just chocolate beans. And then there's like cocoa powder, basically, yeah. This one does not have sugar in it. It's just organic cacao powder, so organic cocoa powder, basically. Yeah, just like, you remember Hershey's cocoa powder? It's just like that, yeah. So that's uh, three tablespoons of that. And then there's cinnamon, half a teaspoon. And then the cayenne, if you want. I made some yesterday, um, and they're actually over here. I'll show you them in a second. But um, I put about an eighth of a teaspoon, and I kind of wanted it more hot. So, <laughs> and I'm not like a soup, like super, super, like hot you know, person like that wants everything really, really spicy. So, so you just kind of got to test it out. You could probably put the cayenne pepper in, mix it up and taste it. And then if you want more, add some more, right? So there's that. And if you want salt, you can put salt. So. I'm just gonna leave that out for now. I just got like a cayenne burst in my... <laughs> okay. So now that I added the, um, the cocoa powder, it's a lot of like dry, you know? So it's getting a little bit more dry. So we'll kind of like test it and see if it forms into a ball again. Boop, boop. And it is. So that's pretty good consistency. Yeah, so that actually looks good to me. It's so messy up here. Look at oh, it's so disorganized. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to take the mixture that I just did and 
Is this good? Can we see this? Should I move over? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to take some, um, some of the cacao powder and put it on a plate. And then I'm going to roll as I'm making the balls, bites. I'm going to roll them. So it just depends on um, like what size you want. You could make them really, really tiny. So they're just like, boop, like bite size, or you can do two bites. I think this is kind of the same size that um, we're going to sample for you guys afterwards. So I just, I still have cayenne in my nose now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. So this is about the size that you guys uh, are going to sample later. About So it's like one. And then you just take it and roll it in the cacao powder. Do, 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 do. It's so fancy. <laughs> okay. So that's basically it. And then you can kind of like just get the excess off. So that's what it looks like. Ding. Uh, yay. <laughs> and then, yeah, this is, there's some other ones there. Um, so that's what they look like. And I put them in an, a contain in container, a container um, like this and put it in the freezer or you could put it in the refrigerator. So, but they are, I think, nicer if they're cold. So I like to put them in the freezer and then, and then eat them. Yeah, so that's, that's it. Yay! Do you guys have any questions before I leave? Mm -hmm. Okay, so his question was, why would I be opposed to using olive oil in my recipe? Um, so if we're, the, the, I can speak specifically with the folks that I'm working with. Um, we're putting them on a plant-based diet to help them either reverse or prevent some of our chronic diseases that we have today, which would be heart disease, diabetes, obesity. Um, so we're trying to lower the fat overall in the diet for all of those reasons. Um, we're trying to lose weight, which that's one way, lowering calories is lowering the fat. One tablespoon of olive oil or any extracted oil would be about 120 to 150 calories. So it's a really good way to, to cut back on calories, first and foremost, and then all extracted oils have saturated fat in them, even if olive oil um, we think of as you know, somewhat healthy, it does still have saturated fat. So in general, we're trying to bring that down when we're, when we're helping those specific people. Yeah? Anybody else? Yes. Um, so his question was, could you use any kind of oats? Um, I wouldn't use steel cut oats because they're just like really hard. So old fashioned oats like I used or, or quick oats or like, um, yeah, any oats other than steel cut, I think would probably be, be appropriate. Yeah, I just grabbed them at Trader Joe's, so. Um, yeah, it says that they're oven toasted, which they just look exactly like any other oats I've seen. So, <laughs> yeah, just regular old old fashioned oats. Regular oats would be fine. Yeah. Anybody else? Questions? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's, there's some research into that, but um, I'm not a proponent of coconut oil. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because of the saturated fat. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Um, 
That's a good question. So she asked um, if you could use any tofu, um, this one or a refrigerated one. I haven't tried any other tofu than this yet, um, and I would like to. Um, I just haven't experimented with it yet. So, yeah, um, you could probably use another refrigerated one that's like just really soft, because this one's pretty soft, silken, like a silken. Yeah, and it would probably work the same. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.